Audio on demand from Vision Christian Media. Until you fear the Lord, you can't even think in right terms. Psalm 134, because you've forgiven me, I fear you. So whatever the fear of the Lord is, it is increased when you see his provision. Now, in my mind, it should be called joy then. If I see what God has done for me, I should be joyful. Why should I be fearful? Because the fear of God in the Bible is the humbling joy in response to the salvation of God. Today, 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 with Jeff Fines. We are taking the gospel to the world. Pastor, apologist, and Bible teacher. One truth that will be delivered in love and compassion, connecting every one person to all that God has promised them. You make me want to dance and sing with every single breath I bring. I will break this up. Today, today, today with Jeff Vines. This is Today with Jeff Vines. Welcome, my name is Bill. Thank you for being here with us. Pastor Jeff is continuing his message about the gospel and how sometimes we don't actively seek God. If you've missed any of this series, you can catch up wherever you listen to podcasts. Just search for Today with Jeff Vines. Pastor Jeff speaks about fearing God and what that actually means. So open your Bibles up to Romans chapter 3, verse 9, and let's finish this message with Pastor Jeff. Romans 3, verse 9. Now, stay with me. I know we're doing this a little differently, but you're you're good, right? You're still awake. There are times I'll be seated in my office, and this has happened numerous times in my life, and I'm sitting there praying, and I've been praying for a while, and finally, it'll just come to my mind, why am I doing this? Why am I praying? I pray people die. I pray the church still struggles. I pray people lie and wound each other. I pray my daughter is ill. I pray Robin's still angry with me. Now, that may have something to do with me, but I still pray. I still pray. And don't, don't you think that I say, what's the use? And I remember maybe 33 or 34 years old, I'm thinking, what am I getting out of this? And suddenly the voice of the Lord, that wasn't audible, suddenly the voice of the Lord said, now young Jeffrey, now we're going to see if you are serving me or if you are serving you. Are you submitting to my plan or are you hoping to get me involved in yours? See, you want, to, you want to have infinite knowledge and there's no way you can't. You don't know what God causes in your life, what he allows in your life. You don't know. The only thing you know with certainty is it can't be apathy. You can't be because God doesn't love you because he's already given his son for you. That can't be why that's happening. You know, I, let me keep going here. I, I met a young girl out here a couple of months ago and I noticed she had been coming for a long time, but I noticed I hadn't seen her mother in a long time. And I said to her, where's your mom? And here's her response to me. She's struggling with COVID. She's taking a break from church and God for a while. She can't harmonize COVID and God. Let me get this straight. COVID happens. See, the grid is wrong. The model is wrong. You thought that God can't exist in a world where COVID happens. And yet did Jesus himself not say, I have told you these things so that in me you may have peace. In this world you will have trouble. Take heart, I've overcome the world. You got the wrong grid. And you know who can be the worst? Pastors. Oh yeah, we can be the worst. We can stand backstage and have this deep, meaningful prayer, God, to help me when I go out there. Give me the words, Lord. I'm not concerned about you. I'm concerned about me looking good. God, help me to be good so I can gain a following. So my name can become a household name. And sooner or later, he has to break you and you realize God's not going to share his glory with anybody. You know, the first, I know we're still down this rabbit hole, shorter sermon if you stay with me, you're focused, so I'll cut it. The first seven years I was here, I'd get invited to speak at a lot of different places. So I was down in uh, Anaheim a few times out at real life and I went around the churches and I'd walk backstage after the service. And I would hear the people, the musicians talk about how, man, 
these people are so dead. Now, I didn't find that when, you, when I was preaching. I found they were pretty alive. They were upset. Nobody's doing anything. The first three rows are standing, they're worshiping, but everybody else, they're just kind of there like this. For a long time, I thought, you know, they're right. What's going on here? Finally, I got the nerve to say something. Maybe they're not the problem. Maybe they know it's all about you. People are smart and they don't want to follow you because they know you're not there for the glory of God. You're there for you. I shared with the staff this past week that for the first time in my life, I don't lose sleep over our worship team. And it has a lot to do with Chris Fink. He's a son of the house. He grew up. He's been here since he was 16, probably younger. And everything he does is for the glory of God. Now, he's not perfect. I'm sure he's got his own problems. Play golf with him. You'll, you'll discover them. <laughs> but, but still, but still, but still. How do we fix all this? Because this is hard to take. Their throats are open graves. Their tongues practice deceit. Their poison of vipers on their lips. Their mouths are full of cursing and bitterness. Because I look out, and quite frankly, honestly, you look pretty handsome. You do. You look pretty good. But according to the Bible, you're the walking dead. So am I. That spiritually speaking, listen now, underneath all our good deeds, charity, service, and generosity is anger, discontent, entitlement, envy, jealousy, pride, and narcissism. Spiritual leprosy. What will cure us? Please follow me here, please. Number one, there's only two of them. The first thing you gotta do, and I know this sounds harsh, but the shock factor, the first thing you gotta do is shut up. The first thing you gotta do is stop talking. Verse 19, now we know that whatever the law says, it says to those who are under the law so that every mouth may be silenced and the whole world held accountable to God. Paul is hammering us with our inability to keep the law and to pursue God for the sake of God. And you will never, oh man, you will never receive God's salvation until you shush, until there are no excuses for yourself. There's no positive thinking about how you're gonna do better tomorrow. You're not saying to yourself, well, I know I've been bad, but I'm gonna turn this thing around because the focus is still on you. You're still in control. It's still up to you. But neither is it masochism. Remember what we said? Transparency without repentance is just useless. I'm pretty sure God knows that you've got issues. You can tell all of us if you want, but I'm pretty sure he knows. So what do we do then? You have to come, and I mean to the very end of yourself, not just halfway. You gotta come to the end of yourself. You've not only gotta repent and say you're sorry for the wrong you've done, you've gotta repent and say you're sorry for the reason you did the right. You gotta come to the end. Remember I mentioned John Gershner, the great preacher in the 70s? He says, because of the gospel, the way to God is wide open. No sin can hold you back because he's offered justification to the ungodly. Nothing now stands between you and God but your good works. All you need is need. All you need is nothing, but most people don't have it. The only way to open yourself to salvation is to repent of your wrongs and the reason you did anything right. We need something completely different than something just to help me live a good life. The first thing you got to do is you really got to come to the end. I mean the very end. As long as you're still singing that song, I'm basically a good person. I'm, you know, I've been to church. I'm, a, I'm, you know, I'm one of the right. You don't know the salvation of God. You got to be quiet and realize you got nothing. And then here's the second thing. You got to fear the Lord. Romans 3.18, this is the definitive line, which is the last line in the section I read. There is no fear of God before their eyes. Now, how will fear of the Lord help us? And second, what is the fear of the Lord? Because the fear of the Lord is a major theme in the Bible, isn't it? The fear of the Lord is the beginning of? And? That's right, there are two verses, but what else? The fear of the Lord is the beginning of? Wisdom. Wisdom. 
Okay. Well, how, what does that have to do with me experiencing God? Until you fear the Lord, you can't even think in right terms. You, you, you can't think straight about reality. You're in darkness until you fear the Lord. Okay, well, okay, what is fear then? Deuteronomy 10 tells us to love and serve the Lord with all our hearts. Here we go with the heart thing again. Psalm 119.38 says that because you have fulfilled your promise to me, I fear you. Because you've been good to me, I fear you. Psalm 134, because you've forgiven me, I fear you. So whatever the fear of the Lord is, it is increased when you see his provision. Whatever it is, you get more afraid or fearful, whatever that word means, when you see what he's done for you. Now, in my mind, it should be called joy then. If I see what God has done for me, I should be joyful. Why should I be fearful? Because the fear of God in the Bible is the humbling joy, the humbling joy in response to the salvation of God. Now, stay with me. You, this is the climactic point, okay? Let me give you two illustrations quickly, and I think in summary, we'll get what, where we're going with this. Imagine a son who has been separated from his father. Maybe he didn't want to live with the father. He didn't want to live in the father's house, and he just left. But he comes to his senses later on in his life, and he realizes how much he needs his dad. Only now his father is a hero. He's noteworthy. He's respected. Most people can't even get within 10 yards of him. He's so famous. He's so respected. He's a hero. He's above. He's beyond. But the son hears there's going to be a big parade honoring his father. And he wonders if his father even remembers him. So he positions himself in a place where he can see his dad. He hears the father is going to be passing through the street. He's ready, but he's afraid. He doesn't know what to expect. There's going to be security. Will the father belittle him? Will the people around say, yeah, you're his son. Yeah, right. All he wants is his father to acknowledge his existence. He he knows he doesn't deserve anything else. Instead, when the father sees the son, he knows instantly who he is because he never stopped looking for him. And he embraces the son and he invites him in. And even though the son longs deeply for this, he knows the father is beyond him, which means he's overwhelmed with joy when the father abandons circumstance and embraces the son. And at that point, the son is affirmed to the sky, but at the same time, he's humbled into the dust. That's what it is to fear the Lord. You know, he's above and beyond. You deserve nothing. And yet he gives you everything. You have such a fear and respect and reverence for God that you don't in your mind think that there could ever be a possibility that a father like that could love you, restore you, and offer you eternity, and yet he does. You're in awe and wonder and fear, and then you're overwhelmed by joy by his provision of salvation. You're too humble to be self-centered, too joyful to ever be sad again. Do you understand what Paul has been doing? All religions, you seek God until you find him. In Christianity, he seeks you and finds you. God chases you until you catch him. He's the hound of heaven. And when it finally dawns on you what the most amazing, loving, powerful entity did to save you, you will fear and you will rejoice. Now, Take a deep breath. Do you realize how blessed you are to see this? Do you realize how many people hear the message of the gospel and they either, it doesn't click? You ever read the parable of the seed and the sower? It doesn't click. It doesn't take. It doesn't take root. If what I'm saying right now, you get it? Do you know how blessed you are? You think you got it because you're smart? No, you got it because the Spirit of God opened your eyes. And you know he did. One of the first signs of someone whose eyes have been opened to this truth is their worship is off the charts because they know they don't deserve, they don't belong, and yet they are here among the people of God. I don't know exactly how this works, and it's been a theological debate for centuries. It probably will not be finished until heaven comes and God explains it. 
But Jesus said, if I be lifted up, I will draw all men to me. I think there's a time, a window in every person's life. I don't know how long it lasts, but I believe there's a window. There's a small window of time in everyone's life where the window is open, the door is open, and you see for the first time who Jesus is. And if you don't respond, that window gets smaller and smaller, and the door gets smaller and smaller, and you go into darkness. But if you respond, if you walk through it, if you have the courage to go through it, the conviction when God opens your eyes, you're secure for eternity. Do you know how blessed you are to see this? In the Old Testament, God goes to Hosea. It's a great story. And he says, you see that woman over there, Gomer? First of all, I would have complained about the name right there. I want you to go marry her. And Hosea says, you know what? I'm a prophet. You're God. You've spoken. I will obey. And not long after the marriage, Hosea realizes this woman has wayward feet. She's unfaithful with many partners. She has children that are not his. He actually names one of the children, not mine. How would you like that to be your name? Let me introduce you to not mine. And her unfaithfulness gets worse. She finally just leaves Hosea and leaves him with all the kids. She goes after another man and then another and then another and, t- and another until the very last man betrays her and sells her into slavery. Hosea turns to God and he says, remind me again why you wanted me to marry Gomer? Gomer? God says, so that you will know something about my relationship to you and know what it's like for me. (laughs) Now, Gomer, or Hosea, God says, I want you to go where they're bidding for her. Oh, man. Purchase her. Take her back. And then you'll really know what it's like for me. Hosea obeys the word of the Lord. There's Gomer on the auction block. She's tied, stripped, People are bidding for her, sold into a life of slavery. Can you imagine how shocked she is when she sees and hears Hosea bidding to redeem her? Hosea bids, purchases, secures. And instead of berating her, he takes his own cloak off, covers her nakedness and says to her, now you will come home and be my wife. Now, do you think Gomer would have feared Hosea? Yeah, she would have been thinking, I don't deserve this. There's no, what's going on here? That's called a holy love, reverence, and awe. She does not deserve the love and mercy of the prophet of God. And yet, this is nothing compared to what God says to you and me. You ought to read Hosea sometime. Hosea merely had to go to the next city. God left his throne in heaven and came to earth to find you. We're not seeking him, really seeking him. And he didn't simply have to reach down into his pocket to purchase us. He went to the cross and suffered and died that you and I might be brought into his presence having met the requirements of the law and the justice and righteousness of God. And he was stripped naked too on the cross so that you and I could be clothed in a robe of righteousness and so the father could look at us and say, Come home and be my son and my daughter. You see, when your eyes are finally open to the gospel, as God's seeking and finding you and coming to us at infinite cost and welcoming you home, it's going to fill your heart with a holy fear. See, you know, I, you know, God help me. Help me to communicate this. Open our eyes. Do you know how privileged and blessed you are? That you're going to be with God in eternity forever. And when that really dawns on you, not only that, it's also going to dawn on you that that's the last place you deserve. See, when, when it dawns on you, that's the last place you deserve. See, as long as you're bringing something, not, not, as long as you think, yeah, you know, I do my thing, God does his, and I'll end up in it. As long as you're like that, no, nope, no. Nah. But when you say, when, when, I really don't deserve this, and yet God gives me everything. When you come to that conclusion, you will begin pursuing God to get God. 
And when you pursue God to get God, everything will change. You'll begin to experience him. Your sense of fulfillment will be immeasurable. Your worship will be off the charts. Your peace will pass all understanding. There will be this overarching joy. And there will be moments in your life when it feels like heaven has touched the earth. This is the kind of message that I, I'm just not clever enough, smart enough Without the Holy Spirit opening your eyes as I said these words, it's useless. But here's how you know that the Spirit of God has opened your eyes. You go out of here and you start going hard after God. Your prayer life changes. Instead of going through your list, God, do this, God, do this. It's this God, before I start, I just want you. And I don't even know how to get you, God. (laughs) I really don't, but please... Give me a revelation of yourself today. That's what I want more than anything else. Now, here's my list, God, but what I really want more than anything, I just want to see you. I want to experience you. I want to feel you, God. When that becomes your prayer, everything starts changing. When he becomes a priority over your business success, over the health of your children, the health of your spouse, over any endeavor, you still pray for those things because you're foolish if you don't. But when he gets there and he knows you want him more than anything else, We'll have revival at One and All Church. And that's why, that's why I want to invite you back next week. Next week, I just want to give you a warning. It's going to be different. Next week, we finish the series. And when you walk into this place, as soon as you walk in, you're going to notice something's different already. I'm not going to tell you what it is, but you'll notice. (laughs) Next week is the first weekend of revival around this place. Everything gets launched. We've done our homework. We've gone through Romans 1 through 3. We know the gospel. Now it's time for you to decide and for me to decide what it is we really want out of life. And it all starts then. Father, I want to thank you and praise you for the truth of your word, how you have hammered into us that only through the power of one Can we be saved only through the power of one? Can we be sanctified, made pure, made holy by the Holy Spirit's work in us only by the power of one? Are we able to enter into your presence and experience you and know you and feel your presence and sense your presence and have this overarching joy to be happy even when things around us sometimes aren't going according to plan. Where our worship is off the charts, where we move from the stale, mundane Christianity to this passionate, excitement, joyful recognition that you are God who owes us nothing but gives us everything. Open our eyes that we may see and worship you maybe even for the first time. Nothing to my God I bring, only to his cross I'll cling. Grace, mercy, restoration. May we worship you with a heart of gratitude in Christ's name. Amen. You've been listening to Today with Jeff Vines. Next time, we'll bring you a new message from Pastor Jeff. You can listen to more messages like this. Just search for Today with Jeff Vines wherever you get your podcasts. You make me want to dance and sing With every single breath I breathe I will bring this offering You are my wonder You bring the wonder Today 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 with Jeff Vines. Thanks for taking time to listen to this audio on demand from Vision Christian Media. To find out more about us, go to vision.org.au.